With our mathematical model complete, Fluent will now determine the primary unknowns at the cell centers. Start by double-clicking Solution in the Workbench window if Fluent is not already open. Fluent will solve for the velocity components and pressure at the cell centers, but other quantities can be specified to be calculated from these values. We are interested in the drag coefficient, so we can add that to be reported. Start by double-clicking on Report Definitions. In the pop-up window, select New, Force Report, Drag. We can name this report CD. The force vector will be in the same direction as the incoming flow, so make sure x equals 1 and y equals 0 in the force vector section. Make sure the report output type is drag coefficient and select cylinder wall as the location where we want to calculate this. In the bottom left, select report file, report plot, and print to console. And select OK. You can now close this window. The drag force is calculated from the pressure values in the solution. To calculate the drag coefficient, however, we need to specify reference values. Looking at the drag coefficient expression for a cylinder, this includes density, free stream velocity, and the diameter of the cylinder. Fluent represents the diameter term more generally as the area, so we need to make sure these match. In Fluent, double-click Reference Values in the tree. Change Density to 1. All other values should match. Note that these values do not change the mathematical model or the cell center values, only how the drag coefficient is calculated. We are now ready to solve the mathematical model. Since the algebraic equations generated by the solver are nonlinear, they must be solved iteratively to get the cell center values of the primary unknowns. To reduce the linearization error, we will lower the criteria for convergence by expanding monitors in the tree and double clicking on residual. We can then reduce the absolute criteria for both momentum equations and continuity to 1e negative 6. This means our solver will stop iterating when the change between iterations drops below this value. You can then click OK. To begin the iterative process, the solver needs initial guess values for the primary unknowns in each cell. Double click Initialization. Select Standard Initialization and change Compute From to Far Field 1. Finally, click Initialize. And click OK. This will set the value of the primary unknowns in each cell to match the velocity inlet. We are now ready to begin iterating. Double click Run Calculation. Set number of iterations to 100 to be safe. And click Calculate. Once the calculation is complete, we should see that the results converge pretty quickly. If we look at the residual plot, we can see that all of the residuals fell below 1e negative 6 in around 45 iterations. This shows that the solutions have converged. Furthermore, the drag coefficient plot appears to have flattened out. This is another good way to make sure the solution has converged. In the console, we can see the drag coefficient after every iteration. At the end, the drag coefficient is about 2.04. We can compare this to published results from the Forenberg paper. For a Reynolds number of 20, we can see that the results match very closely. With the solution complete, we can save the project.